So, um, as I discovered at the end of last class, that um, I had covered section 3.1 during one class period, whereas I had budgeted two for it. Um, and I was a little puzzled by that. So, I went back to when I last taught this class two years ago and watched, well, I didn't really watch the videos because it's given to like, hey, well, what, did, what happened that would cause it to take up so much more time? And part of it was, well, a big part of it is, um, that back then, the notes that you saw on Wednesday, I was typing out as I go. And so certainly that, that takes a fair amount of time. Um, and, uh, um, so in this case, you know, the notes are already there. So I'm focusing on the, the, the main points. Um, but there also was one other thing that I, uh, included last time and I haven't so far this time. Um, some uh, MATLAB aspects of this. So, so, so I was deciding like, what should I do? Should I just continue through the material, even though I'm now ahead of schedule, or just wait? And I decided that I'm going to not jump into the next section until Wednesday, when I'm scheduled to do so. Um, so today will be like a MATLAB day, um, because I mean the coding aspects of this tend to cause students more the most trouble anyway. Um, and oh, certainly, if anyone has started uh um homework problems there'll be ample time to talk about that but i don't see this taking the whole class period anyway so but we'll we'll see how it goes at least i can definitely not rush okay oh well, i've already messed up here i don't want to share just matlab um i want to have the textbook up as well where is that All these files and it's not open. Okay. Um, okay. Now. Um, so I mentioned last time for, wait, what's wrong here? Oh, I see the problem. I forgot to connect to the video system. <laughs> um, let me take care of that real quick. Now that you can actually see what's on my screen, um, so I mentioned last time the three different types of simple system equations to solve. Uh, diagonal system where you're just performing n divisions, an upper triangular system where you use back substitution, and then uh, a lower triangular system where you use forward substitution. Now, looking at the um, homework problems, I do want to check. Which problems I assigned? Oh, that's a problem. Um, <laughs> okay, the um, I need to fix that. You have a list of homework problems here, um, but uh, yeah, but for some reason. Those are, oh wait, that's from last time. Okay, yeah. Um, I will put these in Canvas. Uh, for some reason, I thought they were in there already, but they were not. Okay, so, um, so we take a look at those problems, and there's, if there's any preemptive comments I should make about them. Um, okay, this is the first one for um, we have a matrix A that is assumed to be a diagonal matrix of uh, a vector of right hand side values B and then you're computing X. So in that case, like I said, you're just performing N divisions. Um, and then, what else do we have? Okay, here writing a script to solve this 
specific system with these numbers and figuring out the number of floating point operations. Um, okay. Um, here, uh, solving a general upper triangular system uh, where you have a matrix U, a vector of right hand side values, B, um, and it's, it's still a script. Um, but taking those values, using these formulas here to compute the solution. Okay, making sure I am recording. Oh, looking at chat here. Oh. Um, okay, this is the whole reporting of a problem accessing a home page in Canvas. Has anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay. It says the page has not been unlocked yet. Okay. Um, when something like that happens, tell me immediately. <laughs> I, I, I can't have those problems for any longer than necessary. Yeah, that just started because I pulled it up earlier in it. Oh, so you think before it was before yeah. it was fine and now it's not? Yeah. Yes, it is. I'm not sure what it looks like usually from a student perspective, but I've had like certain things I've opened up before a lot on students. So Okay, because Because five sixty website I am able to access. Not the other one. Okay, so so right now you can't. Is that right? No, this is not showing up. Okay, um, Davis, yeah, I, I I can see if I can go to the student view and see what happens there. If I can. Yeah, so I can access all the other stuff. It's just the home page is um, unavailable. It hasn't been unlocked. But like the dis uh, the assignments and grades and. I all think that. I know what it might be. Yeah. Let me check. Oh. No, okay. Yeah, it's published. Um, so, okay, you, and you were able to access it before? Yes. Okay, if I go to student view. Oh, there might be a prerequisite on the course content home module. Okay, let's. Um, Sometimes Canvas just has a ghost or something. It's happened to me quite for real. I don't think I'm crazy, but I see myself okay. or something. All right, well, I'm glad that got brought out in the open and cleared up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what happens is, like, I, when I set this up, I just copied from the last one two years ago. But then there's certain things that still have to be done. That, like, whoops. <laughs> totally. It was like Jane said, it was there at one point. Yeah. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah, it's like until he decided to enforce it. Okay. Um, all right. Where was I? Oh, talking about the uh, homework problems. Okay. Um, as you hear, writing script to solve a general 3x3 three three system using these formulas. Um, okay. Problem 5. Okay, generalizing a script that implements this algorithm. So this is a general back substitution algorithm. Um, okay. And then also the n by n upper triangular system. Okay, and then uh, pro the last two problems from this section are okay. Uh, the function that carries out gas elimination. You're implementing this algorithm. Um, and then finally, determining the complexity, although that's something I've already talked about. So, it happens once in a while that I'll accidentally give away the answer to a homework problem. No. You're welcome. Um, oh, this one doesn't really involve very much anyway. 
So since there are a couple of problems um, in which you need to take some algorithm from the text uh, and implement it in MATLAB, what you're going to do is pick one that has not been assigned. It's actually from the uh, upcoming section because you're doing back substitution in one problem and Gauss elimination in the other. Um, and also the diagonal case. The only case that has to be covered in any of that is the case of a lower triangular system for which you implement forward substitution. And that algorithm is given in the next section. Um, okay. uh, right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you today for this example, how you get from algorithm in the text to a MATLAB function so that you can carry out a similar process for the homework problems. Right. So, um, with that in mind, okay. All right, so what I've done here is I've cr created a file forward sub.m. So, so this prefix, so if you leave out the .m extension, forward sub, that's the name of your function. So we have to give a function that name or that level of complaint. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to implement that function here in this file, and then I'll show you how you can test it. Um, and that's something that I wanted to do in general for problem four problems where you need to write a function, is make sure it works. Uh, come up with a, uh, at least one example, um, and the, preferably a situation where you already have some way of getting the answer, uh, so you can check it. Right. So, um, so, so this is expiration of 329, which I should have to check, did I assign that for the next homework? Oh, yeah, I did, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Number homework problem done. I still left plenty more for you. <laughs> okay. I'll strike off the list. Um, okay. Um, algorithm 322. So what I've done here is I've reproduced that algorithm um, right here um, as, as precisely as possible. Okay. So first of all, what is the problem that this algorithm is meant to solve? We have a system of equations, L times Y equals B. L is assumed to be a unit lower triangular matrix. Now, I haven't talked about unit triangular matrices yet, but this is going to be something of importance in the next section, but it's very easy to define. Unit lower triangular just means that it's lower triangular, in other words, all the entries above the main diagonal are zero, and the diagonal entries are equal to one, so that's the unit part. So, we, so that. So we assume that the matrix L has that structure. Any entries above a diagonal will be ignored, because they're supposed to be zero anyway. And, uh, so, and we'll assume that L is an n by the n matrix. Um, and then the uh, right-hand side uh, vector B will be given also. So those two items, the matrix L and the vector B, are input arguments. And then we're supposed to compute the solution Y of that system that's going to be our output. Okay. So now that I have the algorithm here, I basically want to translate this into MATLAB syntax, but also take care, care, take care of other MATLAB specific details to make sure that the code is um, as efficient as possible. Okay. So, I'll specify the first line, but it's basically the signature of a function. What are inputs and outputs? This is one of the most important things right here. What data does your function need? What data is your function supposed to produce and hand off to some other code? So uh, we'll start with a keyword function to indicate that to MATLAB that this is a function M file as opposed to a script. Now the name of our function comes corresponds to the name of a file, forward sub. Now you're actually allowed to do this. You can have a function that has no inputs and no outputs, and this is how you would write its first line. But in this case, we do have both inputs and outputs. So our inputs 
will be the, whatever needs to be given to us to proceed. So matrix L and the right hand side B. Um, then the result is the output Y that we specify right here. Now in this case, the function only has one output, so we can just say Y equals blah, blah, blah. But if it has more than one output, then we would put that in a list and in square brackets. Okay, so now, um, so, so basically the interface between our function and upper code has been defined. Here are the inputs, here are the outputs. Next, I'll take this code and paste it down here. And I need to get it into the appropriate syntax. Okay, so like getting all this red here because all the syntax errors I've just introduced. So I have a loop that's going to count from 1 to n. That would be 1 colon n. And we do is really a holdover from other languages, uh, but MATLAB doesn't do that. Pun not intended, I swear. So I just remove do from any of these loops. Um, and we just have a, a keyword n by itself to indicate the end of a full loop to get rid of those two. Okay. So this is how we manage our outer loop. Then, this line is meant to say that the i element of the solution y starts out being the i element of the right hand side b. And we know how to refer to elements of matrices using in parentheses to indicate uh, subscripts or element access in a one dimensional array. Um, and I don't want it to print out, that's why I'm putting a semicolon here. One very common mistake I see is that when it comes to a lot of mistakes, it come out from improper indexing. Um, like when you are, because whatever kind of array you have, vector matrix, whatever, when you in indicate a subscript like this, the, that expression is just going to be a number. Um, so it doesn't make sense to have like y of i equal to, say, a vector. You can't do that. That will give you an error. If you want to store vectors, then you should store them as the rows or columns of a matrix. So then you're using a row and column indexing to do that. But if you just have something like y of i or b of i, that's always a number. That's one of the common things I see is this kind of indexing, try to use that to refer to vectors. Can't do it. Okay. Now you have this inner loop, j counting from 1 up to i minus 1. So we do the same thing as before 1 colon i minus 1. Now, in this algorithm, the loops are counting forwards, you know, 1 to i, 1 to n, 1 to i minus 1. But in back substitution, you, there's one instance where you count backwards. And a cold operator, you have to specify a spacing of minus 1 to make it count backwards. So be sure to include that. OK, and then we do the same kind of indexing on this line. But in this case, the conversion is not very difficult to get in, in the MATLAB syntax. Here we have lij. So now we're going to have two indices. So l parentheses i comma j. And then when you're multiplying, you've got to remember to include the asterisk. Now that is not smart enough to figure out that just putting these two expressions together means multiply them. Um, which is a pain. And the semicolon again, so it won't print out. Okay. All right, so now the text from the algorithm has been translated into, um, into a MATLAB. Um, now, we are not done, though. Can anyone think of, like, if I were to run this code as is, like I would come up with a matrix L and a vector B and call this function, can anyone tell me what would go wrong? Why Your values of wrong? J are starting, they're going from 1 to 0 the first time through this loop. Is um. Oh, uh, is is it, this loop? Yes, sir. Is that going to uh, kick up an error, or does MATLAB know to ignore that? It knows to ignore it. Um, 
Yeah, so in other words, yeah, this loop would not run at all the first time through. It's not an error. But there's something else that is an error. Here. And I can run it and it'll tell me, but. Oh, uh, oh yeah, n. Yeah, n is not defined. It hasn't been given a value. So MATLAB cannot evaluate this expression. Now, we could include n as an additional input argument, but it turns out it's not necessary in this case, because what does n refer to? Yeah, but the, the, the size of a problem. The, the number of rows and columns in L or the number of elements in, in B. So we just need to define n. Yeah, so we go ahead and define it. Now, there's more than one way in which we can do that. Um, so, uh, this is meant to be a, a, a square system, so I can find things like the length of B. Okay. All right, so N is defined. Now, there's something else that's wrong, and MATLAB is telling me that something else is wrong. Can you see where? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. B matrix. What about it? We don't, we have not, uh, we have not um, given the input matrix L. Well, the thing is, when we go to run this function, we'll come up with matrix L okay. and pass it to this. But notice that MATLAB is complaining right here. Watch for when, when, when this shows, if this is red, you have syntax errors. We don't have that because we, we got fixed. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is orange, it means there's a warning. And sometimes, not always, we have to address these warnings. Would so, would you just do like y equals zero n comma one? You can, yeah. So, uh, first of so all, the, the warning message is the variable y appears to change size on every loop iteration. Consider pre allocating for speed, because if I leave this code as it is, the first time through it'll set the first element of y. Uh, then the next time through, when it goes to set y of 2, it thinks that y is an array of length 1. It's going to deallocate that one, then allocate a new one of a larger size. And it'll keep happening every time. Deallocate, allocate. That slows down the code tremendously. It should be avoided at all costs. Uh, so, as you said, if you, I can define y up front. I can create a zero vector of, of it, and I want y to be a column vector. So length n. Now it's pre-allocated, and now we're green. The warning has gone away. So, so make sure to do that, because when get code is going to run for a while, uh, this will it does substantially impact the learning time. And it can be difficult to avoid in certain situations, like if you really don't know what the size is going to be. Um, like you try allocating something that will definitely be large enough, but it just depends on the problem. But in this case, we definitely know how much space we need. So there's no reason not to. Allocated. Okay, so now we're ready to go. But uh, but before running this, or before setting up a test on which to run it, uh, are there any questions? So I need to set up a test case I, and go ahead and run it, and I'll get a solution. And I need to verify that the solution is correct. So we need a unit lower triangular matrix. So first what I'll do is I'll just create a random matrix. Um, so I'll just make it 4 by 4 Let me make sure my no one space for numbers. All right. 
Okay, so now we have a, um, a, a four by four matrix, but it's not what we're trying to. So now the thing is, I want to keep these entries that are um, below a diagonal. I want to get rid of everything above. I also want to get rid of what's on the main diagonal because I want those entries to all be one. Now, the easiest way to do that. Tri L is for taking the lower triangular portion of the matrix. Now, if you just specify a matrix by itself, um, it'll take the lower triangular part, like including the diagonal and everything below it. But by specifying a second argument, you can tell it what diagonals you want to keep. You can have some flexibility there. By specifying minus one, um, I want to keep everything from the so this does, Negative diagonals are ones below the main diagonal. So keep everything from this first sub-diagonal and below. So I'll go ahead and do that. So every, it's kept those entries. Everything else is wiped out. And then, um, so in general, That's the general usage. Um, okay. Um, and then I want the um, diagonal entries to all be equal to one. So what I'll do is I'll add on an identity matrix of size four by four. So that has zeros everywhere except ones in the diagonal. And now I have a unit lower triangular matrix. Okay. Now I'm in the right hand side. A column vector of plane four. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to solve this problem twice. First, okay. So I'll y1 equal to L backslash B. So this is the standard way for solving systems linear equations in MATLAB. This performs, if necessary, Gauss elimination and back substitution, but it'll, it'll detect that the matrix is lower triangular. So it'll end up just using forward substitution. Okay, so that is the solution, supposedly. And now, I want to solve it again using my function. Forward sub LB. Setting myself up for great embarrassment here, in case I, there's an error, or I get the wrong solution. Okay, and we can see that they appear to match. Um, want to be sure. Um, So, if I look at the norm of um, 1, 2, minus y1. So, norm of a vector is a Euclidean length, square root of the sum of squares, also known as a vector 2 norm. We'll talk about norms later on. Okay. Divided by norm of y1. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> That doesn't happen very often. Usually it's a very small number, like something in the order of 10 to minus 15. Um, it probably carried out literally the same computations that my function did. So um, there isn't even any round off error here. So it's, 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 they're, it's dead on. That's good. Um, another good way to check it for solving linear systems, you can uh, check a residual. You do L of B minus L times my solution, Y2. And yeah, we get something that is extremely small, round off error. So it's safe to say that the code is correct. Uh, and this is something, I guess, so sometimes you may not have an exact solution handy depending on the problem you're solving. Um, so you 
there may be some sort of residual that you can check instead. Uh, so for example, suppose you have a function, a MATLAB function that finds a root of a function f of x and solves the equation f of x equals zero. And maybe you don't know the exact root, but you can go ahead and substitute the computed root into the function, and hopefully you get something small. So that would be an indication that it's an accurate root. Okay. Um, so, uh, questions about any of this?
So this is something I'll get into more later, but um, go back to the Gauss elimination algorithm that's given in the section that we're on, how it performs row operations on both A and B. And of course, you know from your first linear algebra course, it's called the augmented matrix. Um, but this is not so practical in the case where suppose you're having to solve many systems before A H equals B for the same A with different Bs. Then you only want to perform Gaussian elimination the row operations on the matrix once, and then on top of any right-hand side you have. Now it sounds like a ridiculously contrived situation, but it actually is a thing uh, where that, that may be needed. So um, it's actually better to just work on the matrix and, and then handle this part separately. What we'll see is that forward substitution actually plays a role in that. Anyway, so. <laughs> All right, yeah. Like a deepening of the error. <laughs>